Sorted. Hello there and welcome to another Elite FPL video with myself, Steve. Or oh, shall I just call it as I was about to say, welcome to another Elite Steve-O video. Um, I was just quickly just looking through the school predictions from this week. I've taken an absolute battering from the history, as ever. The history comes through again. Some Muppet said, Why do you look at history for? It has no relevance whatsoever. Well, I'll tell you why I look at the history. Because it comes through. It always happens. Always. Take Liverpool versus Newcastle. Everybody, including me. Newcastle are going to beat Liverpool. Newcastle are going to beat Liverpool really comprehensively. Newcastle are going to score lots of goals. History didn't think that. In fact, Liverpool unbeaten in the last seven now against Newcastle. Apparently, history doesn't matter. So, and again, I always say this. If you are watching this, and actually genuinely listening and hearing what the history says and you genuinely are thinking for argument's sake hmm I'm thinking of bringing Isaac in this week Mr Reed. I'm thinking of bringing Isaac in this week um what does the history say Liverpool unbeaten against Newcastle ah, I'll, I'll leave it for one week just a simple example and uh, yeah the history of all ten fixtures Guess how many it got wrong? How many fixtures do you think the history got wrong? Two. Those two games were Arsenal versus Fulham and Brighton versus West Ham, which completely went against everything to do with the history full stop. The only thing it got right regarding um, Arsenal-Fulham is the fact that Arsenal liked to score against Fulham. That's it. But certainly... Um, this week has been quite um, an extraordinary turn of events. Uh, so yesterday, whether you care or not, I was at the AW All In pay per view. I will be doing a podcast literally straight after this, talking about my day. I'm not going to bore people with it. I can already hear Fire Talk going. Oh, thanks, thank guy, thank God for that. Even though he's not Welsh, he's not bloody Welsh. He's from, he's from Middlesbrough, or Newcastle, or something like that. I can't do a Geordie accent. <laughs> whatsoever but yeah basically um, I was out all day and football wasn't on my mind whatsoever to be completely honest with you um, in fact the uh, I did, I'm not going to lie I did check my phone once for the football results and that was at a rough, roughly 3.30ish and I looked on live score and it was at the 66th minute and I just went oh, for fuck's sake Burnley losing 3-1. Let's just see what the fucking thing is. And I just laughed. I just laughed seeing Matty Cash had scored twice. And um, the fact that I then knew, knew that Akanji wasn't playing, I'm just thinking, you lucky cunt. You absolute lucky bastard. It's a fact. It is a fact. Very, very lucky getting off cash for a kanji and obviously on the i don't know whatever day it was uh, we had the news um it was saturday wasn't it saturday evening that's right we had the news that foden was traveling on his own and the kanji wasn't traveling at all and i just i just couldn't believe i'm just like it's fucking typical isn't it i bring in a player um for man city for their guaranteed clean sheet and yet, he doesn't even play. City concede, and Matty Cash comes off the bench with two goals and three bonus points. Couldn't make it up. Don't worry, I put a bet on it, but just to get an assist. Because the odds, just for Matty, Matty Cash to get one assist, guess what the odds were? Have a guess. Three to one? No. Five to one? No. Six to one? No. Eight to one? No. Ten to one? Matty Cash to get an assist? Ten to one. Those odds are absurd. Normally, for most players to get an assist, I'll give you a simple example. Gusto versus, um, not Lou, and the week before, West Ham. Gusto just to get an assist. Two to one. Two to one to get an assist. 
And yet, Matty Cash, a right wing back, right right defensive player, whatever, ten to one to just get an assist. Not two assists, not three, one. So I thought I'll put 50p on. Hey Presto, he comes through with two goals. Ten to one would be normally for him to score at any time. So I don't quite understand why Labrooks um, went down that route because uh, whether or not, uh, William Hill have taken away the goals and assists, any time goals or assists, so it looks like I'll never ever be betting again. Because I hate that. I hate the fact that I can't just do 50p on, for argument's sake, uh, Matty Cash to score or assist at any time. I hate that. Why they've taken it away, I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, so I just laughed when I saw that and I said to Dale, like, do you want to know the results? And he just said yes, and I told him. I saw that Holland scored and then I also saw that he missed a penalty. Uh, just hilarious, can't make it up. Uh, I subsequently found, seen the penalty today, hits the post. He absolutely walloped that flaming penalty, didn't he? You tell he's very frustrated and trust me, he's going to absolutely batter Fulham. Next week is, is, is going to be his hat trick. Yesterday he could have got a hat trick based on highlights. Next week against Fulham, he'll be getting his two, two or three goals, if not more. Maybe four, maybe five. Who knows? He's going to have a lot of fun against Fulham next week. And again, the history came through. Wasn't expecting a, 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 an open game for Man City. That's now uh, the, the sixth game out of seven where Man City have won by one goal. No, Steve-O. They won 2-1. Yeah, they won by one goal. Two minus one equals one. So they won by one goal. Good news is I had Rodri in my team. Sky Fantasy Football, that's the main thing. But... No, I was just listening into Jason's stream just now. A fantastic stream. Really enjoyed it. And there was some callers. I just, I mean, Matthias is a prime example um, saying that Sterling, I don't know what the hype is. You're a moron. He has Liverpool in the first game, which is always going to be a very, very difficult game. We know this. He plays exceptionally well against West Ham, as Jason quite rightly says, dribbling through every single player on the planet. And then against Luton, the same thing. What you're not seeing, which is what I am, and this isn't your fault, but he's got no one in front of him. Jackson is shite. Gallagher is shite. They're awful players. They shouldn't be in the Chelsea team. They're only there by luck. By pure luck, they're there. They're not good enough. But they have to be in that team. So like Jason said, Enzo Fernandez is just looking for Sterling. The problem is there's then no one in front of Sterling, so Sterling's got to do all the work. It's almost like the reverse of Harry Kane, where Harry Kane, ha or even Messi, where Messi and Harry Kane have to go all the way back to the fence just to get the fucking ball to actually start some form of attack. Sterling's the other way round. He's fucking right up the, the furthest end of the pitch. It's like, come on. Hello. Give me the ball. Because Postacino has basically gone, you used to be really, really good for Liverpool and Man City. What happened? Right then, I'm going to give you free reign. I want you to fucking attack that goal. And, I, and, if you, and if you have any opportunity to get the ball in to whoever's in, whoever decides to get into the middle, because hardly any Chelsea players do, you will put that ball across. Hence why, by pure luck, Jackson was there the other day in the middle. But trust me, I've seen all three Chelsea games. Jackson is a waste of space. Absolutely useless. So why did you buy him then, Steve-O? Well, because Ollie Watkins is exactly the same. I've seen nothing from Watkins for me to go, oh, I want to keep him. I'm just attacking the fixtures. That's all it is. That's all it is for me. Just attack the fixtures. And this is the thing, what I find fascinating, because obviously I wasn't part of the Sunday surgery, so I've got a different view on it when I, when I listen into a stream I'm not part of. And I go, it's amazing how people knee-jerk so quickly. 
oh, I need to do a minus four. Oh, I need to wildcard. I need to do this. I need to do that. People like me, who are just literally just sat here at half past nine in the morning, just chatting absolute nonsense while you people watch this crap. I'm literally just spouting off shite. It's like Trigger Lip said. All I'm doing is just voicing my thought processes. And then I come to a conclusion at the end of it, like I did yesterday. I don't need to change anything with my team. In theory, I do not need to change this team at all. Just keep it as it is, go into the international break with two free transfers. There is one player I'm considering, and you're not going to have a clue who it is. Only one player I'm considering, and it's all dependent on price rise, price drops, that's it. If not then if I can get through game week four without having to transfer that player, then guess what? It means that I go into game week five with two free transfers um, and then really work out, right, who do I want? Because I hold my hands up. I've already missed out on the likes of Brentford, the likes of Brighton. I've already missed out. Their fix just changed now. Their fix just changed now. I've missed out on Matomo and Buemo, Visa, um, Estupanan, etc, etc. I've missed their points. Now, it's looking into the future of the, the teams with the decent fixtures. And I've already written down it. It's all there. Piece of paper. So the teams that I've written to get, to get on, if you're wildcarding, to get on. Chelsea. I mean, ironically, I've put Brentford. Chelsea, Brentford, Arsenal, specifically from an attacking perspective. I still think defensively they're fine. But um, Arsenal, Tottenham, you know, having a minimum of two per team there. So what's that? Two, four, six, that's eight players. So you've got to, you've got to choose three players from these teams, which I think will um, rise you up the ranks. Um, so I'm stating the obvious with two of them. It's Brighton and Aston Villa. But certainly Liverpool and Newcastle. I've also got Crystal Palace there, but Crystal Palace from a defensive aspect, fine. So if you want to get in a defensive player, fine. But the other teams that I've got down as avoid, if you're if you're doing a wild card, I would avoid these teams like the plague. And this is what I wrote down. This, this is game week. This is after game week two. Forget game game week three knee jerking. This is game week two. I did this, and I think most people would agree. So. Teams to avoid Man United, Wolves, Burnley, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, Everton, Fulham and Nottingham Forest. Unless with Nottingham Forest you want to get in Owinyi. Awonyi Nyinyi. Whatever his fucking name is. Other than that, you know, that's why for me I wanted to get rid of the absolute sack of shit which aren't performing or aren't playing and bring in players which I know are pretty much guaranteed to start apart from a kanji so how did that minus 12 go well we have the likes of uh, a kanji in for Gabriel zero zero so that's minus four so I'm already on a minus four without even doing anything I'm already on a minus four but then you look at Sterling as an example, who got 19 points versus Fernandez, who got in, what was it, 17, which when you include the, the four. So I'm then up by, what, two, th how, many, how many points did Fernandez get? I really should have done this beforehand, but I cannot be bothered. I haven't got the time to be um, sat here poncing about doing them, maths and whatnot. So Fernandez. He got a total of 12. So 12 plus 4. Um, hold on a minute here. Let's do the maths here. 12 plus 4 is 17. Plus, of course, the 4 minus 4 already. So that's already 21. But then minus 19, I'm down to uh, plus 2 points at the moment as it stands. A whole of two points. You then add Nicholas Jackson's points, which was plus seven, versus Ollie Watkins minus five. So I'm up by another two points. You then get rid of Eze, so minus three points, but then you add Foden, 
with his whopping, what was it, five points he got in the end or four? Must have been four, surely must have been four. Plus four. So overall, I'm five points up. Five points up on the deal on that minus 12. And I reiterate this point when you've got idiots that come into the, the chat or the comments and they say, you cannot, keyword being cannot, do this. Reevaluate everything. Listen to what the person's saying behind the screen or on the podcast and listen to their reasons as to why they're doing it. You can't say you can't do it. You can. There is nothing stopping you. It's not like as I go and press the transfer button, something comes out and goes, nope, you can't do it. Oh, I can't get there. I can do whatever the hell I want. As I stated at the time, don't need to worry about it. Just think of it as this. You're my rival, along with the other 10 million people that play this game. Be happy that that person has done a minus 12. Be happy. It's done fuck all to my ranks. I'm still three millionth in the world. So you don't need to worry about that. So that mug that says, oh, you can't do a 12. Actually, I'm the mug because that person is a hundred thousandth and I'm three millionth. So well done to you. But you should be looking at yourself. And again, I keep reiterating this point. Why are you doing so well and I'm doing so bad? Don't turn it around and go, you can't be doing this. You're not allowed to. No, you should be asking yourself, well, I'm actually in a really good space here because Steve over there is three millionth in the world. And yet I'm a hundred thousand. I'm clearly doing something right. I'm not going to listen to Steve. I'm not even going to watch Elite FBL. Fine, brilliant. Create your own content if you want. Please do. By all means, crack on. Hit the podcast. Hit a YouTube channel. Do whatever kind of content you want. But you won't. You'd rather just keep coming back to this channel and then complaining that the person is doing a minus four or a minus eight or a minus 12 or isn't hitting the wild card. Look deep into yourself and ask yourself, why are you asking these stupid questions? Because I gave you the answers why I'm doing it. I'm getting rid of Gabriel for Akanji. Why? Because Akanji is pretty much the nailed centre-back. Okay, he was ill this week. I'm bringing in Sterling for Fernandez because, in my opinion, Sterling is looking the most threatening. He's the most. He's the. He's the key for Chelsea at the moment. He's got three really good fixtures. Get him in. Phil Foden, by all accounts, he's looking being absolutely phenomenal for Man City. Eze, yeah, he's all right. He's got a bit of skill to him. Have you seen what's in front of him though? He can clear off. And then it's a toss-up between Ollie Watkins and Jackson. But I'm, again, even though I've not been particularly impressed by Jackson, I'm still willing to keep him for those fixtures versus Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth. Albeit, I do agree with, uh, was it Skipper that came on? And he said that game ain't going to be easy for, for, for Chelsea. It's, again, I either be really, really strong-minded and go you know what keep the team as it is even though I, I know I said about a minute ago now that I'm I'm wanting to go into the the, the, the game week five or two free transfer and stuff but can I be aggressive can I be really really cheeky and then get Ollie Watkins in for Nicholas Jackson for that Liverpool game because I think Aston Villa can take advantage of Liverpool's poor defending possibly because I think that the game against Nottingham Forest is going to be quite tight and are they going to allow Nicholas Jackson any room at all I don't think so but again it's all about being strong willed can I do it can I do it but certainly um, coming out of this game week and then looking at it for for game week four and going well I'm still going to be playing an iron in goal Chilwell Estupanan Akanji Foden Saka Sterling Martinelli Rashford Jackson and Horton that's what that is what the team's going to be 
you know, I heard people yesterday saying about the Arsenal Man United game, is it really worth having six different assets in that game and stuff? Well, maybe not a defender. But trust me, I'm going to be wanting all the attacking players I've got. If you've got attacking players in that game, because I think it's going to be end to end. Per personally, I think it's going to be a really good open game. I think that specific game is going to be a lot of fun. Remember last season, and 3 2. 3 2 to Arsenal, wasn't it? I think it was. And. I expect it to be that kind of game in this. I think that, you know, I look at the history here. Look at that. Look at that. There was a nil-nil back in the 30th of January in 2021. But since then, Man United 3, Arsenal 2, Arsenal 3, Man United 1, Man United 3, Arsenal 1, Arsenal 3, Man United 2, Man United 2, Arsenal 0. Admittedly, that was a friendly. but And that was this year. Essentially, the history is saying whoever's at home is going to score three goals. So it looks like this is going to be a high-scoring game and people are going, I want to get rid of Rashford. I want to get rid of Martinelli. Crack on. Who are you bringing in, though? Because you hear the names branded a band about Sterling, Foden, Madison... And Buemo, Bowen. And quite rightly so. Quite rightly so. You look at the, their, fi their specific fixtures upcoming this week. West Ham away at Luton as an example. I, I don't think it's going to be exactly high scoring. But 2-0. Maybe at a push 2-1 to Luton. But I think 2-0 West Ham. Tottenham away at Burnley. Look, we're just... Um, Dan used a line in the Discord last night. He said, look, oh, Burnley just being naive defending. We were like this last season. And I already said it at the start of the season. In the opening several fixtures that Burnley have got, we are going to get battered. You can go back to it. It's literally what I said. We are going to get battered. I said, teams like Chelsea, Man City, Aston Villa, Man United, Liverpool, they're going to destroy us. Again, I didn't watch the game yesterday, but I asked my uncle, I said to him, look, mate, what was the game like yesterday? He said, the first half was crap. Trafford looked out of his depth. A Burge, a Sander Burge couldn't win an argument. The midfield was like light, lightweight. Some player called Della Crooks was clumsy. Villa broke so fast, I thought we were on the drubbing. I thought we were going to be in for a drubbing, which <laughs> turned out almost virtually was. The second half was we murdered them for 10 minutes until they turned us and scored their third. After that, it was just game over. And, and this is the thing. When you've got teams that like to hit on the counter-attack, like Liverpool, like Man United, like Tottenham, like Aston Villa... We're going to get, quite rightly, as my, as my uncle said, we're going to get absolutely murdered. We're going to get absolutely destroyed. So if I look at Burnley's fixtures here, the game against Tottenham, again, they're going to score two, three goals. Nottingham Forest away. <laughs> God, I mean, that has got nil-nil or one-nil either way written all over it. Man United at home, we'll get battered. Newcastle away, we're going to get absolutely destroyed. Chelsea at home, we're going to get absolutely destroyed. Brentford away, that'll be an entertaining game, I think. And then, what did I say? What did I say in the pre-season in the, in the, in the, in the pre streams? What were my words? I said that once it gets to game week 10, 9-10, when it's Brentford versus... Brentford slash Bournemouth in game week 9 slash 10, that's when you want to jump on to Burnley. If anything, or more specifically, that's when our season is going to turn around. It's literally what I said. Because from that point, we have Brentford away again, that's tough, but we could get something there. Bournemouth, 
should be pretty straightforward. Crystal Palace at home should be pretty straightforward. Arsenal away, they'll destroy us. But then West Ham, Sheffield United, Wolves, Brighton will probably get absolutely annihilated the way they're playing. Everton, Fulham. So basically, between October the 21st down to the 23rd of December, we'll do okay. That's when we're going to be getting our points. But until then, we're, we're, just, we're just getting outdone by proven quality Premier League opposition. It happened in the Championship last season. The difference is, is the Championship. In the Championship, you can make mistakes because the quality of player that you're playing against, you know, they're not good enough. But... My uncle's just saying here, because um, I voice messaged him, he says, Company has said it's about a learning and it's a hard lesson. Yep, I think we'll be okay. Yep. As you say, we won't be playing class teams every week and the team will learn and gel eventually. Yeah, and, and, and that'll be it. It'll be by October. October, the late October. I called it. Because let's get real here. There are worse teams in this league than Burnley so far. Everton to name one. Wolves to name two. Luton. Sheffield United. Could you argue Bournemouth? Could you argue Fulham? There are worse teams in this division. But again, I'm a realist. I, I know what to expect. I still think that Murich should be playing ahead of Trafford mainly because of his distribution. I think that way the defence will be a lot more confident. Not that they're not passing it back to Trafford, but his distribution isn't like... You feel a bit nervy when he gets the ball at his feet. He's the kind of player that just wants to boot up the field. Murich, he'll flame and jiggle it around, spin, spin around, do whatever he wants, boot it 40 yards, find whoever's up front, and away we go. Trafford ain't like that. Trafford's a good shot stopper. But Murich, I think, should be given the opportunity. He should have been given the opportunity from the, the go, to be honest with you. And then after a few games, if company isn't particularly happy with the way Murich is playing, because he has got a few mistakes in him, but he, he improved a lot last year. He improved so much last year. And for him to be told, now nah, you, you're not playing... I think that's a bit poor from company. I think that's the first time. I've, that's probably the only thing I've disagreed with company on. Dropping Murich. But yeah, this top, this Tottenham game, like I said, people that are bringing in Madison and stuff, bring him in. Cool. Again, there are thought processes in my head where I go, hmm, Madison for Martinelli, Madison for Rashford. But do I really need to do it? Not really. <laughs> I'm not in desperate need to do it. And that's the thing. It's, 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 are you? Are they that bad, the players, to get rid of? Not really. I can give them one more week. And that's why we go into game week five with this international break with four matches in. And we go, right, then I can now, re I can now reassess everything and go, right, then. I'm not happy with this player, this player, this player, this player, and so on and so forth. I mean, that Matthias uh, yesterday made a point. I'm thinking of getting rid of... What was it? I think it was Watkins or Jackson for Antonio for the game against Luton. And then in game week five, I'm going to do Antonio to Isaac to then jump on the Newcastle fixtures uh, moving forward with them. And, you know, Isaac's certainly a player in which I've got my eye on. I mean, he's 7.7 .7 now, <laughs> which is... Um, just mad, but certainly um, Brentford, Sheffield United, Burnley, West Ham, Crystal Palace, Wolves. Yeah, I think I think it's a great plan. The problem is, will you stick with the plan? It's like like I, I, I go over and over and over it, don't I? Plans, they're only there for so long, and then you realise, oh, I better I better tear it up. But for me, it's trying to stay strong as much as I can. And sticking with the plan of just basically, it's just, it is literally just, I'm, I'm going to quickly check now, live, the prices of these particular individuals. 
to see if I need to do this move or not. But I really do not see these particular players dropping or going up in price. Well, I say that. One individual looks like he could be coming close to and the other one doesn't look like it so I may I may I may do the move may do the move um because I've been quite impressed by this particular individual and I look at the the fixtures um I do think that the one that I want to bring in has got a slightly better upside slightly better upside to the one I'm getting rid of um, truth be told but I can I can hold off I think for a bit at least there um, I did put in the members discord any questions uh, for me I know Brew said about you know is there any players that you could recommend moving forward um, regarding fixtures and maybe punts and stuff like this and look I think I've already kind of gone over it really but you know when I look at my piece of paper over there and I look at the teams like I mean if 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 you're talking punts I still think uh, Aston Villa slash Newcastle are the ones to be looking at here um you know, by all, I didn't look. I didn't watch any of the game. I just watched some bloody highlights. But by all accounts, Newcastle did all right, and it looks like Eddie Howe is trying to bed in Harvey Barnes slowly. But Anthony Gordon, across two fixtures so far. He's got a goal and an assist. And for 5.5, I mean, who are you going to bring him in for? <laughs> That's the problem. Harvey Bar Bar Barnes is still a wait and see, but I still think that Isaac, if you can get him in, is the one from my point of view. Aston Villa, I'm stating the obvious. DRB, 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 DRB. Um, he is certainly the one which I'd be looking at. I mean, Brew mentions Aston Villa players. Uh, sorry, West Ham. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna take an absolute wild punt on on him, Antonio Bowen, James Ward-Prowse, go for it. But then you've got Man City after that, in which. Okay, they're at home. It's a three o'clock kickoff. I'd expect Man City to to win that one nil, two nil. West Ham could get a goal in it. But it's not particularly match suited for West Ham, and West Ham cannot stand playing uh, them. And then they got Liverpool away, which ironically would be more profitable for someone like Bowen or Antonio because um, they're going to bully that that defence. But then their fixtures do turn but that's when you want to be in theory jumping on it's why I love it's, again it's why I love the Sky game so much because of the the, the, the the planning that can go into it whereas this week in fact I've just answered my own point and it's the point about talking aloud here with FPL you can just jump on and off so do you know what yeah go for it go I, I think Antonio I think well done Matthias well done to you you've called it get on Antonio for this specific game week with Luton. I thought I'd just quickly address a few comments uh, before we get moving out of here. So, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do, just quickly. Um, I wanted to look at the Members League or the YouTube Chat League as well. So, I wanted to see how Alex, Alex Voller was done very well in the YouTube Chat League. Um, He's oh, there. I don't even. I can't even. I can't even do the maths on that. But he's nine points behind Vijay, who's two thousandth in the world, uh, having an absolute stormer of a season so far. But Alex Volos wild card. If we look at it here, well, you won't be looking at it. I am. 
but moving forward I mean I'd be getting rid of Sun get him gone Alex just get him Madison just just hold up your hands say you've made a mistake and just get him Madison just do it if you want a Tottenham attacker Madison 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 he's the Kevin De Bruyne of that team so just get him in um, Edison yeah for that Man City coverage that's great Chilwell Saliba um, even though I think three Arsenal players is great you know Saliba Man United Everton even though they don't particularly like playing Everton and then Tottenham in the next three I don't know if you'll be doing a um, swapping in and out you know a doggy and Anderson in for Saliba and Estupanan if and when necessary I don't know if that's the plan for, for Saliba and Estupanan but certainly when you've got the likes of Crystal Palace who are at home to Wolves, you can put in um, Anderson for Estupanan and then Udogi, who's got Burnley away, in for Saliba as a, as a prime example. Um, even though it goes against my don't bench premium team players, but you're not. You're bringing in Udogi because Tottenham are a premium team. So I, 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 I'm assuming that's what you're going to be doing, Alex, but nothing wrong with Sackle or Martinelli. Foden, Sterling all fine. Hall and Jackson all fine. But yeah, I'd, I'd, if, if I'm in this situation, I'd just hold my hands up. I've made a mistake. Uh, like Basil Fawlty says, I've made a mistake. Um, um, but certainly I would just be bringing in Madison for Sun. Done. Happy days. And then in uh, fourth spot, we've got Peter Scully and then FPL Bailey, who is fourth. In fact, he's joint fourth with Simon Reeve with uh, no weak foot and various and Michael Swedin and Jordan Brennan really pushing up their backsides. Um, then in the Members League, same people again. We've got Matty T at the top there, 2-2-1 two, two, with Peter Scullion, Lewis Allen and Simon Reeve. But again, it's very, very tight. There's not much gaps between any of these particular individuals or whatever because for me, the way I kind of judged how my season's going is based on how I'm doing in the moderator league. So there's only 10 of us total. And two of us are presenters. So in the moderator league, I'm right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. Um, so yeah, there's 12 moderators. And I'm on 168 points, whereas Blonde, whose top is on 187. So I'm 19 points behind Blonde, who is 427k, I'm 3 million. So she's 400k, I'm 3 million. And there's 19 points between us. Uh, just above me by 4 points is Armand Dillon, 6 points is Gabriel de Rock. Dan is 6 points, um, One Life Soccer is 8 points, and then Jason is... Uh, if I can do the maths here, which I can't because I'm an idiot, 11, 13 points clear of me. Oh, yeah, Jason did a minus four as well, didn't he? So, Paulie and Jason are 18 points clear of me. And then you've got Blonde, uh, sorry, Harbour Boy, who's 19, 19, 20, 21 points or whatever it is. Yeah, I can't even do maths because I'm just an idiot, but. Yeah, there's nothing between myself and Blonde. Whereas between me and Firetog, who's 10th, I'm 14 points clear of Firetog. And then you've got Dread and Brew, who are right down there. Um, I'm 30 points clear of Brew and 23 points ahead of Dread. So, yeah, there's there's nothing in it between us to be honest not much in it uh, there's a few gaps obviously here or there opening up but I am I'm just content with how everything is and I just, like I keep saying it's it's by game week roughly game week 2025 when you want to be really going hard in with everything but yeah Jason obviously did his minus four which was was it Diaz out and a defender out for oh yeah Gusto out for Sterling and uh, Matty Cash I mean that's about as knee jerk as you can get um, because 
when is Jason going to be playing Matty Cash as a prime example? He's already admitted on Discord that, look, I don't know who to play. I've got a bench in headache. This is the problem with having a, a strong bench. Yeah. So, for instance, next week, Jason's going to play Chilwell versus Nottingham Forest. And then it's, right, well, I've got Matty Cash away at Liverpool. I've got, all right, he'll play Henry at home too. So it'll be Chilwell, Henry, and then Udogi. So there we are. I've already done Jason's team. But, as someone said last night on the Discord, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing players that have points and I'm not... I mean, Jason's here this week, players on the bench with points. Like I said, I was very fortunate to get Matty Cash off the bench. But I've always said all along, I want one player as a strong bench option. That's it. That is it. So, yeah, just I was just quickly reading through the video comments here. And, um, yeah, so someone here saying... Um, I forget his name now. I apologise. Um, but an individual saying, I don't watch Elite FPL for FPL advice. I watch it for FPL content. Um, I don't know what that means, but um, cheers to the hosts and the Elite FPL community. No, thank you for being part of it. Um, there was one down here. Oh, yeah, this one here saying... Um, Janko saying hey Steve a great content it's not I'm from Australia with uh, with Premier League like you say go with your heart enjoy the game have fun I've been, been I have been bullied over the years it's not nice but I watch your videos I'm Janko from Australia yeah uh, anybody that's been bullied in their life especially when you're my age it has a massive psychological um, effect on you don't get me wrong by the time I was 21 I kind of <laughs> uh, became an individual just listen to Total Steve about my history regarding bullying basically there was one which was uh, horrible to talk about but just listened into that but certainly certain things have had an effect on me many many years later which unfortunately has just psychologically um, destroyed me um, Jack Byrne saying the big FBL content creators tend to be annoying all the channels all the channels I've enjoyed are more sincere enthusiasts. They would obviously like to grow as channels, but they remain themselves rather than putting on an act and trying to become big time Charlies. And as Triggerlips remarked recently, all their advice is after the fact. So now there'll be hours now now there's gonna be hours of why you should be getting in Sterling instead of something less obvious. Look, there's nothing wrong. I mean, what have I done today? Bruce asked me a question, a simple question. Who do you recommend? As a, as a punt or something for this, this game week. And I've just stolen it from Matthias and gone, Antonio. It's like a joke with my brother last night from extras when uh, the Welsh guy says to Andy Millman, Good Lord, how old was she? 100. You know, I've just gone, Antonio. Why? She's playing Luton. <laughs> It's based on absolutely nothing other than the fact that West Ham are performing very well at the moment. Antonio seems to be doing okay. A loot and a shit. Get on him. That's it. That's all it's based on. And without going over the same thing, yes, you watch the big content creators. They'll go through every single bit of data possible. And then when the player actually comes through despite the fact that his expected goals and assists was 0 0.001 and then he comes through then they come out on social media and go uh, uh, but his expected assists said this is his so um Aston Villa saying, uh, guess who owns Foden? Me, and how annoying at least. I don't own a Kanji too. That is just typical FPL, even more typical City just don't own, apart from Hall, and it's not worth the pain. I think um, having a defender is fine. Um, I think having a defender is fine. Um, James saying, it's frustrating if Foden doesn't play. I mean, admittedly, this was said beforehand. 
I bring him in for this fixture. So if he doesn't play, I'll be annoyed regardless of the fact that Gusto will come on instead. Well, unfortunately, um, there we go. He, he did come on. And, um, yeah. Um, notes from the hurdle saying, Steve, have you ever considered that other men may seem uncomfortable around you because you may appear as someone who is physically very strong? Yeah, I'm not strong. Um, but I come across as strong. Um, angry with the world and potentially being capable of extreme violence. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, even though your words are not... It's like a um, law-abiding citizen, isn't it, when he says, Yeah, would I like to kill him? Yeah. Um, sure, did I plan it over in my head? Yeah, who wouldn't? I'm not saying you are any of these things but I can see why strangers might feel this I'd be very wary of you if I hadn't been watching your content for years for years I've never even seen your name until literally this season and you've been watching us for years so so if someone's been watching us for years clearly this season me and Jason or I have done something to irk you that much that you feel the need to comment Do I deny that I'm angry with the world? No. Listen to the shite that I talk about on Total Stevo. Jesus Christ. You think I'm bad on here? Listen to that. Jesus fucking Christ. That's terrible. And, yeah, I can't stand this world. I hate people. Just seen me and my brother and Dale yesterday in the car. Fucking hate them. But got to put up with them, haven't we? Got to put up with them. But I always make this point. In fact, I've always made this point whenever I'm at work, when I'm in a a front-facing service. I get it. I'm in, I'm intimidating. I'll never forget when a manager said to me, "Yeah, but Steve, you got to understand, yeah, that you're really intimidating." Why? Because I'm six foot two and fifteen stone, and I'm covered in tattoos. All right, then fine, fair enough. How many other people look like that? Especially where I'm from. Every fucking person looks like it. Yeah, but you're really intimidating though. So then I choose with anybody that may potentially be intimidated by me to just be like, come across as really friendly and calm and whatever other... Um, I don't know what the wording is. Um, actions are to, to make sure that I don't come across as intimidating yeah don't get me wrong walking down fucking Oxford Street if I'm walking like a miserable cunt yeah but when I'm walking around the zoo I'm in a happy place because I'm just walking along oh there's a gorilla I'll just stare there and look at it for 20 minutes fucking hell look at the size of that python I'm just going to stand there and stare at it for 20 minutes Oh, that lion there, that's nice. Yeah, I'll just stare at it. You get the idea with that. The places that make me feel uncomfortable and whatever, I'm just Mr. Misery. I've always been like this. I always reference a story from what? 10 years ago. I, I would have been, what, 22, 23? And this girl goes, in, in Sainsbury's, in the warehouse, she says, God, do you ever smile? I went, sorry, what? Every time I see you, you're never smiling. And I just went, I don't even know. I said words to the effect of, well, firstly, I don't know who you are. Secondly, what does it matter that I'm not smiling? And thirdly, what do I need to be smiling about? <laughs> like, and that was 10 years ago. Probably longer. But you get the point. And... Yeah, the whole thing about having tattoos and stuff. It's like, I always make this point regarding uh, the, well, I'll just say it, the true Geordie when I met him. And I just thought, I don't ever want to talk to you again because you just come across as a non-approachable person. And sorry, more specifically, I've approached you. I've put my hand out to shake your hand and say, hi. And you've basically just, scuffed at me and just went, you know, just shake your hand and that's it. You come to me, I'll give you an example. If someone came to me at AEW yesterday and just by pure chance said, 
do I recognise you from somewhere? I can guarantee you my answer will be, because I've had this quite a lot. Do I recognise you from somewhere? Um, I don't think so, no. No, no, I, d I definitely recognise you. I really don't think you do. No, 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 you're from YouTube, aren't you? All oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. And then that's it. And then I'll, if they shake my hand, they shake my hand. If they say, oh, I love your stuff. Oh, cheers, thanks very much. And that's it. I'd like to think, I've, within reason, I've given a decent enough impression where they may think, you know, that was an okay interaction. But as I discussed to death on the Total Steve, the podcast, when you just get someone randomly just going, Oi, mate! Are you talking to me? Yeah, I know you, don't I? Um, I don't think so, no. Yeah, 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 you, you do YouTube, don't you? Yeah, love your stuff, mate. And then they're gone. I reiterate this point. Imagine you're walking down the street and someone just goes... In fact, we'll use this person's name here, shall we? Oi! You! So this is Notes from Hurdle. Notes from Hurdle has every right to just continue walking and ignoring the person. And if that person has um, a problem with that guy, going, why did he ignore me for? Well, you haven't said anything. You've just shouted, shouted towards in someone's direction. If you just randomly turned and you looked at the person, didn't recognise them, and they go, I know you, you have every right to be like, um, I don't know what you're talking about. It's quite simple. However, as I've discussed a thousand times on the Total Steve podcast, if someone went, Oi, Brent! <laughs> Steve, oh, mate! Now oh, look, and there's someone waving or something. Well, instantly, as Ricky Gervais says, like, right, he knows my name, right? How does he know my name? Well, he's a complete stranger to me, so I'm just going to link it into Elite FPL. Clearly, he knows from Elite FPL. Uh, yeah, hi, mate. Yeah, you do Elite FPL. At that point, there's a, there's a context. But I'll give you another example of um, a place of work that I'm at at the moment. There's a guy... He's in decent shape. Every time I try to interact with him. I'll, I'll give you a prime example, actually. The other day, I was just walking down, walking down the road, and he was in the distance, and I could see it was him because he's just like that. Oh, I'm walking along like that. He's got to tense his traps all the time. Just relax, mate. Just relax. But you've got to put on this bravado, so he's walking like that. Hello, mate. And I'm just like, you're right, dude. You were uh, just come back from all right now, have you? Yeah. Was it a nice holiday, was it? Yeah. I'm just like, just give me something. And every time I try and interact with him, he's just constantly like this. Uh, yeah, mate. No, I need more than an answer here. I need you to answer my question. I've lost something. Can you give me information as to where I could find it? It's just I, just, I can't deal with it. And yet, they're almost putting a bravado in front of me to be like, well, he's a big lad, so I've got to be a big lad. Oh, it's just, it's awful. I hate it. I cannot stand it. And like I said, I've, I've gone through it my whole life. Since the age of, well, like I said, since the age of 2021. 20, since going to the gym and lifting a couple of dumbbells and I've, 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 I've added a couple of inches to my biceps and my chest. Legs are still about the same size as when I was born. Stick thin, because they just will not grow. But being prejudiced against because you're a big lad, it's absolute fucking nonsense. Don't get me wrong, I get it. There are people that I'm intimidated by. But like I said, if there's something that I need to talk to them about, I'll just happily go. I'll give you another prime example, actually, at the hospital I work at. And in the gym, they've got an absolute jacked up freak. Probably injects himself with more anabol than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And stays on the, the tricep extension machine all day. Every time he sees me, it's... Then it's head down. Whereas I'm just directly looking at him just to say, hi, nothing. And then, of course, as he's walking away, he's like going like this. Oh, oh yeah. What are you doing? You were, working per you were walking perfectly normally. And then the second you see me, it's oh, got to do this. Got to prove that I'm the bigger man. 
I'm just sweeping up a road. All I want to do is go, you're right, mate. <laughs> Can't even do that because straight away he's put on the defensive, which then puts me in the defensive. It's just it's fucking mental. Oh, God, what's this got to do with FPL? Nothing. 